Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about HQL and uh, the query object. Now, in our previous tutorials, we saw how to get an object from the database given a primary key. And uh, we also learned how associations are loaded. So say, for example, I have an object that has a list of objects as associations. Then we can use a simple getter to get that list of objects because we already have a handle of the main object. So this is one of the ways in which we can pull up data in uh, Hibernate. There is another way to do it and this is kind of close to what we would do in a, uh, in a simple JDBC scenario. In a JDBC connection what we would do is we would write a SQL query to uh, you know run uh, you know the SQL query in the database and pull up data from the tables that we need. Uh, we would write joins, we would write where clauses, we would sort, everything would happen in a SQL query itself. And uh, the returning data, I, you know, as per the query that we have written, we would get the data and then we would parse it. Now, since Hibernate is doing all this, Hibernate also has provided a method in which we can write queries directly to access the database. The one way to do it, of course, we've already seen is the, you know, passing the ID and passing the class name and getting the object. Uh, well, that's fine. But if you want to get a bulk of objects and you want more control over the data that we need, we can also use uh, this feature of Hibernate, which is which allows us to write queries and uh, retrieve the data. Now, the queries that we write is not SQL. Okay, we do not write the standard uh, SQL queries. We use a separate query language that's provided by Hibernate and that's called the HQL or the Hibernate query language. So we need to write queries in HQL. Now, if you're thinking right now, okay, great, one more language to learn. Well, let me tell you, it's not actually that bad. HQL is very similar to the SQL queries that we already know and uh, we already write. Uh, the difference here is that uh, when you're writing a SQL query, you would, you think about tables. You say, okay, get me data from this table and you know this table, join this table. So we, we are thinking in terms of tables. But in the case of HQL, since you know the Hibernate is an object relational mapping anyway, we do not think of tables. We think about objects. So when you when you would say in a SQL, you know, fetch data from user details table what we would say in uh, Hibernate is fetch all the in the records of this user object. So we don't talk about tables, we talk about classes and objects. Um, it doesn't sound like a big difference, but as we uh, write queries, we'll understand how big of a change this is from writing SQL queries. So in order to write HQL, um, we need to use what's called as a query object. So let's write some queries here. Uh, what I've done here is before I started recording this tutorial, I populated the user details object with some uh, dummy users. I have users one to 10 and uh, I can pull up data from this table by using uh, HQL. So let's get started. The starting is the same, we still need a session factory we need to we need a configuration object we need to build a session factory and we need to open a session now once i am in a transaction i can use a fetch to get all the objects that i need so the first thing i need to do is create what is called as a query object and uh, i need to supply the query that i need to the query object so what i do is in the session i do a session dot create query. Now the session dot create query will return me a query object depending on the query that I'm trying to run. So let me run this query from user details. There's no select star you might have noticed. Uh, it just starts with a from user details. So this is actually a very basic HQL. Uh, we'll have a look at how HQL is different later on, but note that there's no select star as you would write in a normal SQL query. You just say from and the object name. Again, it's not the table name, it's the object name. The object name is, I mean, the class name is user details. 
Now, once I do a session.create query, it returns me a query object. So I will need to capture that query object in a local variable. So I'll say query equals session.create query. Now I need to import session.create, I mean this query object. I'm going to use org.hibernate. I'll tell you why I'm doing this and why I'm not using the JPA query later on, but for now, Let's go with the org.hibernate.query. So this is the one that we are trying to use. So now that I have this query object, all I need to do to execute the query is to call a method of this query object called list. So this is going to return me a list of all the records of this user details. Uh, table. I mean, it, it's not really user details table. It's all the records of the table that is mapped to this user details class. So all I do here is say list users equals query dot list. So the query dot list is going to return me a list type. I'm going to import list from Java dot util. Okay, so at the end of this, what I'll do is I'll just do a system dot just print out the size just to verify we have all the users. Okay, I delete should return me 10. Okay, now let me make sure I have this as update. Okay, so let's run this. There you go, it's running a select and it's returning me the list size is 10. So it's pulled up all the, re all the records from this table. It's just doing a select star from user details. But what we are doing is instead of giving a select star from table name, uh, we are giving a from class name. So this is what Hibernate needs to pull up all the records. So this is fine. But now let's say we need a bit more control. Let's say we want to write uh, where clauses here, say. So there's a way to do that. And uh, what we need to do is we need to say here, wherever we have a from class name. Um, let's say, for example, I want to pull up all the users whose ID is greater than five. Okay, so what I do is in, normally in a SQL query, I would say select star from table name, where column name, the ID column name is greater than five. So just like instead of a table name, we're using a class name here. So the same way, instead of using a column name, we use a property name. So what would happen is, Let's say where, so instead of the column name here, I will mention the name of the property that is mapped to this column, so which is user ID in this case. So I'll say where user ID is greater than five. So now let's save and run this. So there you go, it returns the value of five because that's all that um, it pulls up because you have a where clause here. Of course, you can try this out and uh, print out the list of users to make sure you have all the data properly. Uh, I'm just not going to do that in order to save some time. So these are, uh, this is the couple of uh, examples of using uh, Hibernate query language. So it's fairly straightforward. What I do is I create a query object and I do a session dot create query. And in the session dot create query, I pass a string, which is the Hibernate query language string. And there are three ways in which the HQL and the process of retrieving data using HQL is different from a normal SQL. Uh, the first difference is that instead of using a uh, table name, you would use the class name. Instead of using uh, the same, instead of using uh, a column name, you'd use a field name. So instead of the table names and the column names, you're using the class names and the field names. The second difference is you do not see a select star uh, command here it's assumed that you're doing a select and all you have to do is write the query starting with a from. So you say from class name and of course you can write a where clause where the field name 
and then you can filter out based on values and things like that and then the third difference is instead of uh, returning a record set what hibernate does is it returns a list of the entity objects so what i get here is you know once i get the list here the list of users is actually a list of this user detailed objects so these are three ways in which, uh, at least initially, you will find uh, HQL and the query object different from the way you would do it, the way you do things in a JDBC connection. So in the next tutorial, we're going to look at a few more things you can do by using HQL.